In this video, we're going to continue with activity 1.3.3, Constraining a Sketch. We're going to be working through steps 17 through 25 to finish out this portion of the activity. In the previous video, we finished out by creating a sketch that we see right here on, on our screen. So I've actually kind of stayed in this file and if you've closed it out or you might need to open this back up steps 9 through 16 I'm going to kind of keep running with this and then that way we can kind of keep going so I'm gonna go ahead and find that here's the sketch that I made usually a very common mistake to work with is that we will select create new sketch and then you know we try to pick a new sketch plane and click on there but what happens is, is that's like creating a new sheet of paper and sketching on top of it. So I'm actually going to select the X tool and I want to go back into the sketch that I originally created. Notice how it highlights when I hover over it with my mouse. I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to select edit to go back in and I can press the N key on the keyboard to turn this normal. And what they would like us to do as noted in the activity is to apply some constraints to make this kind of happen. So first one is going to be we want lines 2 which is this one here, and 10 to always be parallel to each other. So I'm going to go up here to my constraints. I'm going to find that parallel constraint. I'll select it. Notice how it stays highlighted. I'll select line 2, and I'll select line 10. And here's what may happen, is your sketch may kind of, kind of go crazy for a little bit without being, you know, kind of too technical. So, but what we can do is I'm going to go, since it's highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and right click and say escape the create parallel constraint. And you may have to grab your lines and kind of what we call massage the sketch a little bit to kind of get this to kind of turn out a little bit. So there we're kind of getting back to what we have going on. If I check the show constraints, I will see that parallel constraint and there's the glyph for it right there on the left side. And I can see both those lines are now highlighted. Okay, they say that line 6 should always remain parallel with the x-axis despite revision in the orientation of any other edge or line. So what they're looking for is that we always want it parallel to the x-axis. I'm always going to go ahead and either I can make it parallel to this line down here at the bottom, but mainly I think I'm just going to go ahead and grab a horizontal constraint and select that line there. So it's always going to be uh, maintaining horizontal you know kind of orientation lines 5 and 7 should always be the same length so in this scenario I can grab the equal constraint and we know that 6 is this top line 5 would be this line and 7 would be this line so we always want to make sure that those are going to always maintain the same length so if I move one or the other they will always be the same length no matter what especially if I grab here or if I grab on this one you'll notice those lines are always going to be the same length they also the design should require line 3 and line 9 align horizontally so they move up and down together so they're talking about these lines they all kind of automatically do that that was an automatic constraint if for some reason that if they don't move together you're gonna to maybe see that there is a uh, Here's one that has the horizontal constraint where you see this line and this line are together. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. So now if I move one, the other one doesn't. So I'm actually going to find the constraint up here to where I can actually do that. In some other uh, softwares, you can actually find there's some like a collinear constraint. But honestly, a lot of it's probably going to be utilizing a horizontal constraint. So I can just select a point like on this line and then select a point on this line. And now if I escape that, if I click and drag, they will both stay horizontal to each other. Now sometimes you may have kind of like a scenario like this. It just depends on how well the sketch is crafted and to be able to kind of create some of those things. So that's really what we're looking for as far as adding geometric constraints to try to kind of lock some of that geometry in. And what they want us to do is we kind of add those in and create, you know, some of the different items. They would like us to create a construction line uh, through the midpoints of lines one and six, and we're gonna use this construction line as a line of symmetry. 
So I'm actually going to hide the constraints for right now because I can get a little busy. And I'm going to go ahead and take a line. I'm going to find the midpoint of my line up here at the top, number six. So when I have the line tool, I can find the endpoints. Notice the little squares that kind of pop up. When I'm right in the middle of a line, I get a square there. So I'm actually going to click that and notice how it ties it right to the middle of the line. I'm going to do the same thing down here until I find the midpoint of this bottom line. Now, maybe the best case scenario would be maybe I need to start off and actually here's what it looks like. So it kind of comes at an angle and it's right here. For you, it might be in a little different spot, but it's going to be pretty close. I'm going to right click and say escape line. And I'm going to select that line and I'm going to right click on it and I want to toggle that to a construction line. And it'll kind of have a little different appearance. And what they would like us do, to do is number one, they would like that, that midpoint and when we draw this and set this up, we're going to grab the midpoint constraint. I'm going to select this line and then I want to select the origin. And what you're going to see is now the endpoint of this construction line is right there in that particular case. In order to kind of set this up to where we want this to be vertical, we're going to grab that vertical constraint and I'm going to select that line. And notice how it's going to turn black. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and say escape to be able to stop using that. Okay, we're going to fix that midpoint uh, on line one to the origin, which we just did. And then what we're going to take a look at is we're going to um, create a circle down here utilizing some of the following constraints. So we're going to go ahead and create a horizontal line through the midpoint of line two. So I'm going to go ahead and grab line here. The midpoint of line two would be right there. There's my midpoint right in the middle. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this line out. So just somewhat close. I'm going to right click and say escape. I'm going to select it, right click it, and toggle this over to a construction line. And we'd like to draw a circle. So I'm actually going to go ahead and draw a center point circle. The, we want to make sure that, that as we take a look at this, notice how this point right here, if I kind of just touch it, I can tracking line. I'm going to draw this circle kind of like this. I can right click and say escape circle. Notice how I can kind of keep that kind of horizontal, or excuse me, actually vertical. So that was an automatic constraint. If I don't like that, I can always select it and delete it. Now I can move that circle around. But just to show you, in case you didn't get that to happen, you can always play around and enforce that by selecting vertical, select the center of the circle, select this point, and now that will be applied there. The next thing they would like us to do is grab the tangent constraint, which is going to take the circle, edge of the circle, and have it touch this construction line. And in this case, it made it a little larger. I'm going to go ahead and escape that tangent constraint. If I drag my circle, I can make it a little smaller or larger just based upon what I'm kind of working with there. So a couple things as you do that, we can automatically kind of take a look at also uh, mirroring the circle over to the other side. So here I'm going to go ahead and grab the mirror tool, which is right up here. It says select the mirror line. I'm going to use this large construction line here in the middle and select my circle and I can go ahead and apply what I have going on. I'm going to escape the mirror. If I show my constraints, I'm going to see that these same constraints get applied when I do a mirror. And as I move that, notice how the adjustments of of those get applied and even then the same size so it's like we have an equal constraint on both of those and that's going to kind of help us finish out number 25 in the next video we'll take a look at numbers 26 through 29 to start applying some constraints and dimensional constraints and start locking in some of this geometry to create our final design